Welcome to the online version of the Youth Takeover Service. My name is Ethan. And my name is Rachel. And today we're going to be talking about worship, prayer, and we're going to have two talks from the magnificent Jad and Josh. Now it's time for us to worship. So get ready, sit, stand, close your eyes, whatever you feel comfortable with. And I'm just going to pray for us as we enter our worship now. Lord, I pray that as we worship, you would keep our theme of tonight's service, resilient disciples in our minds. I pray that you would keep our eyes and our hearts focused on you and that we would leave this evening focused on pursuing something greater. In Jesus' name, amen.
Lord, thank you for that amazing worship and for how you love us. Lord, as we head into the rest of our service, we remember all of the other things that are going on in the world right now. We're thinking about Ukraine, Lord. We're thinking about the cost of living crisis. And Lord, we ask that you would be with all of the young people across the world who are affected by these issues. Father, I ask that you would be with them if they're feeling stressed or strained or worried. I ask that you would bring peace to those in the midst of conflict. Um, and Lord, I ask that you would just be with them in these times. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. A reminder that tonight we are thinking about what it is to be resilient disciples. And tonight specifically, we are looking at pursuing something greater. Now, Vicky is going to read our passage to Timothy 2, and there will also be two talks on different aspects of the passage. Jad first and then Josh, but for now, take it away, Vicky. Today's reading is from 2 Timothy chapter 2. Share in the troubles we have like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. A soldier wants to please the enlisting officer so no one serving in the army wastes time with everyday matters. Also, an athlete who takes part in a contest must obey all the rules in order to win. The farmer who works hard should be the first person to get some of the food that was grown. Think about what I am saying, because the Lord will give you the ability to understand everything. Remember Jesus Christ, who was raised from the dead, who is from the family of David. This is the good news I preach and I'm suffering because of it to the point of being bound with chains like a criminal. But God's teaching is not in chains. So I patiently accept all these troubles that those whom God has chosen can have the salvation that is in Christ Jesus. With that salvation comes glory that never ends. Continue teaching these things, warning people in God's presence not to argue about words. It does not help anyone and it ruins those who listen. Do the best you can to give yourself to God as the kind of person he will accept. Be a worker who's not ashamed and who uses the true teaching in the right way. Stay away from foolish, useless talk because that will lead people further away from God. Their evil teaching will spread like a sickness inside the body. Hymenaeus and Philetus are like that. They have left the true teaching saying that the rising from the dead has already taken place, and so they are destroying the faith of some people. But God's strong foundation continues to stand. These words are written on the seal. The Lord knows those who belong to him, and everyone who wants to belong to the Lord must stop doing wrong. In a large house, there are not only things made of gold and silver, but also things made of wood and clay. Some things are used for special purposes and others are made for ordinary jobs. All who make themselves clean from evil will be used for special purposes. They will be made holy, useful to the master, ready to do any good work. But run away from the evil young people like to do. Try hard to live right and to have faith, love and peace together with those who trust in the Lord from pure hearts. Stay away from foolish and stupid arguments because you know they will grow into quarrels. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but must be kind to everyone, a good teacher and patient. The Lord's servant must gently teach those who disagree, though maybe God will let them change their minds so they accept the truth. And they may wake up and escape from the trap of the devil who catches them to do what he wants. There are three points that I want us to think about from this passage. What is the special purpose that Paul refers to in his letter to Timothy? What gets in the way of fulfilling that purpose? And how do we as Christians overcome those barriers that prevent us from pursuing this special purpose? I'd like to think that our special purpose as Christians is to be representatives of God's kingdom and to share his message through how we live our lives. Often we struggle to understand what it looks like to live out God's purpose. What, what example do we have? Well, there is a faultless example in Jesus. 
he was the perfect example of how to live in a way that pleases God. Jesus pursued God's purposes through humble service that was focused on the needs of others. He had time for everyone without discrimination, whether it be the teachers in the synagogues or the Roman centurion or the lady at the well. In the kingdom of, he in the kingdom of heaven, everyone is equal. There's no Christian premium. He didn't seek a comfortable life. Jesus didn't seek fame or status. He understood the eternal nature of God's purpose and everything he did pointed to that. We must also keep this eternal perspective, the big picture when we think about God's purpose in our lives. So what gets in the way of us fulfilling that purpose? Well, Paul tells us to flee evil and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace. In a perfect world, this doesn't seem too difficult, but of course, we live in a world where the enemy has dominion. It's a broken world. This often means that we fall short of God's best for us, and the enemy deceives us into fulfilling his purposes with promises built on lies. He wants to convince us that God's purposes are not in our best interests, but God's. I'm sure lots of you here are familiar with the Narnia series. C.S. Lewis, the author of the series, accurately represents how the devil misleads us and takes away from God's purposes. In The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Edmund meets the White Witch, and he's easily tricked into believing that she can offer him something better than Aslan. Now, when we think of the devil, we often depict or think about how the media portrays him. This evil, grotesque, horned individual that if we spot from a mile away, we'd be able to tell, yep, that's evil and I can run away from it now. I know that. But C.S. Lewis does a much better, much more accurate description of the devil in The White Witch, who when meeting Edmund appears in a white gown. She's regal, she's beautiful, majestic. She offers him immediate gratification with Turkish delight and appeals to his ego with a promise that he can be a prince in Narnia. In reality, Edmund ends up as a prisoner in her castle, chained to a wall. Because of course, everything that he was promised by her was a lie. Sometimes as young people, we feel that Christianity is a prison. It's about limitations, being restricted in terms of what we can do. We believe the lie of the enemy that we should have the freedom to do what we want, as long as no one else gets hurt, that we can do what feels good and right to us. But in reality, all the enemy offers is temporary pleasure and self-satisfaction. We trade eternal meaning and joy for empty promises. In the end, Edmund is freed by Aslan and reunited with his siblings, eventually fighting alongside Aslan's army, defeating the White Witch. Aslan then fulfills his promise and makes Edmund and his siblings kings and queens of Narnia, stating once a king and queen of Narnia, always a king and queen of Narnia, maintaining the same eternal perspective Jesus had. As children of God, we are always children of God. So how do we live our lives in a way that allows us to fulfill God's special purpose for us? Possibly the biggest lie that the enemy tells us is that this life is just up to us. We are alone. If we buy into this, then we can quite quickly feel like we're just not up to it. We want to give up. But the truth is that we have Christ's power in us. It's not down to us just to do our best, but with the Holy Spirit, we can pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace. It can feel like a battle, and it is a battle. But as the Phil Wickham song says, the battle isn't ours. The battle belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to you, Lord. He doesn't call on us to fulfill his purposes alone, by his, but by his Holy Spirit. And with other Christians, we can do the good works that he is calling us to. Edmund was tricked by the White Witch when he was vulnerable and away from his siblings. 
as brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to stick together as protection against the deceit of the enemy. Where there is light, darkness hides. In the same way that Paul encourages Timothy, we must encourage one another as we fulfill God's special purposes together to pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace. Amen. Thank you so much, Dad. Before Josh comes, let's reflect on what Jad has said. So let's take 30 seconds to think to yourself or whoever you're watching this with. What is God's special purpose for you? And is there anything holding you back from that purpose? Okay, over to Josh on a different aspect of this passage. Okay, so if you've not met me before, I'm Josh. I'm the youth pastor here at St. Stephen's. And I want, to, I want to introduce you to one of my best friends. On the screen now, you're going to see Sam. And the Sam I know is very thoughtful and smart. But mostly, if I'm honest, he's a big goofball. And that's one of the reasons everyone loves him. But he has a part of him that I know in my head is true, but it kind of, I, I still don't really believe it. And this is what he does for a job. He is an attack helicopter pilot in the US Marines. When he was a single man, that is definitely a good chat up line. Uh, it is a very serious side of him and the job is very intense. And they really throw you into the intensity right at the start of your career with boot camp. And the Marine boot camp is the most intense of the whole US military. Now, I can't say I'm an expert on boot camp, but this is what I've heard from Sam. Um, during it, you learn lots of physical and practical things, and there are like academic tests and things like that. But there's one big lesson you're learning through the whole thing. And in every situation, they are rewiring your instincts in danger and threat. When the normal human's natural instinct is to fight flight or freeze, they are being trained to be focused, to think critically and to be able to run towards danger. They are creating a new instinct. In the middle of a gun battle, they won't fall apart, but instead they get better and more focused. So in our passage that was read earlier, Paul is the writer of it and he's talking to Timothy and they're talking about conflict and suffering. And, and suffering. And he encourages Timothy to ignore his instincts and head towards that suffering. He says, share in the troubles we have, like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Timothy has the choice to avoid the suffering, to run away from it, from it to protect himself. But Paul tells him, don't stay comfortable, don't protect yourself, choose to suffer more. In this passage, he isn't talking about the suffering that we are experiencing in the world now, many of us, out of our control, like uh, the inflation and the cost of living and wars and all of this stuff. No, in instead, this is the kind of suffering that he's talking about. And this is what he says in verse 8. Remember Jesus Christ, who was raised from the dead, who is from the family of David. This is the good news I preach, and I am suffering because of it to the point of being bound with chains like a criminal. But God's teaching is not in chains. So I patiently accept all these troubles so that those whom God has chosen can have salvation that is in Christ Jesus. With that salvation comes glory that never ends. To Paul, he knew that every meter of ground he took for the kingdom of God, it would come with opposition and suffering. The Christian message and the Christian people were persecuted on two fronts, by the pagan Roman colonizers of the time and by the local Jewish authorities. Paul is always in and out of the prison cell, getting beaten up and chased out of town when he would preach or perform miracles. And to Paul, the suffering is entirely predictable as a response to his actions in preaching the good news of Jesus. But just like the US Marines, he has a new instinct. He doesn't protect himself, he heads towards the danger and he encourages Timothy and us to do the same. 
If we want to build the kingdom, suffering comes with the job. And so we need a new instinct. But for those of you watching online who live locally, this is the opposite of the instinct that brought many of us here to Twickenham. I moved here and continue to live here because it's so safe. There is beautiful nature everywhere, good schools and an amazing church. Moving here was engaging with my instinct for comfort. Now, to live somewhere nice and to go to a good church is not a sin. And for those watching from afar, it's lovely, come and visit. But if comfort becomes an idol, something that we sacrifice everything else to, it limits what we can do in the kingdom. As a Christian, there can be a danger in speaking truth and love and living differently from the culture. Now, this is not close to the danger Paul knew, but uncomfortable moments, rejection, or a change of reputation. There'll also be frustration, and you'll lose the freedom to be able to do whatever you want. This is why Paul says to change our instinct on suffering. If we want to love God, grow disciples, and transform communities, down that path also comes suffering and discomfort. Ministry definitely costs. And I'm using ministry to mean the calling God has on your life to build kingdom and to make an impact for him in the world. And it costs in a way that even if it's just your Wednesday nights serving older youth, or it might cost your energy to head out and serve on a Sunday or an evening or whenever, or it might cost you money. Many of you watching know this. And actually, I want to say big respect, because I know there's actually a lot of people who watch online who aren't local, and they're not local because they've left Twickenham as missionaries to go and serve those around the world. And then you connect back online. And there's also many of you watching who serve God in your communities and you welcome the suffering that comes, comes with it. So you've got my respect. And actually, we are in a time when so many people are in need. And actually, I feel challenged to imitate some of you guys at home. And I want some of you as well to feel challenged too. That I want to imitate what so many people connected to this church online and in person in person do. And in my small way, I'm going to pray and decide how com uncomfortable I'm willing to be. For me, I feel really challenged during this process of writing this talk and thinking about this to reconsider my finances. My instinct is to be really tight with money. My wife knows this. And so this kind of thinking and prayer and this change I'm going to make is actually going to be really hard for me. But I know that actually, looking forward to this next season, I'm actually not going to be affected too much by the cost of living crisis. So I feel challenged to choose to be uncomfortable and to suffer, even if small, to give some of my money away to those who are in real need in this season. That's what, I, that's what I'm thinking about and reflecting on. That's my discomfort that I'm going to choose. What's it going to be for you? Where are you going to challenge your instinct for comfort and self-preservation and instead, invest in your higher purpose in the kingdom of God. What are you going to choose to do that when you go down that road, you know there's going to be suffering, but it's for the greater glory of the plans of God? So let's just pray for a moment. And we're going to pray about what this looks like for us in this season. So let's take a, a brief moment to reflect. So Holy Spirit, wherever anyone is right now, I pray that you fill them and you reveal to them about that instinct for comfort and protection. God, I want you to reveal that to them now. God, we're so sorry for when we choose that. We're so sorry for when we look for comfort rather than your kingdom. And God, I want to pray now for everyone at home that you would show them the way that they can invest in your kingdom to give up comfort and to serve you. So Holy Spirit, come now and share that with people at home. So God, we give you our comfort. We partner with you in your plans. And we pray for a changed instinct. In Jesus' name, amen. song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we
we could ever breathe we live for you jesus the name above every other name jesus the only one who could ever save We live for you, oh, we live for you, and holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you, open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and
Thank you so much for watching this Old Youth Takeover service. We hope that you're really, really inspired to live your life for something greater. Thank you so much for watching. We hope that you've seen how incredible our young people are and we hope you've been really, really blessed by it. See you soon. See you soon.